Hello everybody, it feels like I haven't posted in a long time, but with Summerfest approaching, we've really been feeling the pressure to get our renovation to a place where we can start living there. The weather's been gorgeous and I finally managed to get some paint on the walls in the rooms upstairs. I had been going back and forth between a light linen colour and an oatmeal for the walls, but honestly when I saw how the white primer hid a myriad of imperfections in these old plastered walls, I decided they should stay white. In most houses I guess the doors and trim are white and the walls carry the colour, but I'm going to go the opposite way and paint our doors. I thought about the focal point of all the upstairs rooms being the beautiful view that we get from the tall windows. Um, and what do we see? We see all this gorgeous nature. So I drew inspiration from there and sat down to create a mood board for each room. The main thread that's going to run through all the, the rooms will be the white walls with the grey door. And there are a couple of rooms, the bathroom and the kitchen, where the inside colour of the door will be different to the colour that will be on the outside of the door. Um, but other than that, I've chosen uh, colours by Liberon. And I'm just really taking inspiration from nature, thinking about the greenery, the blue sky, the sunshine all those lovely colours and, uh, and applying them to each room, giving each room its own theme, its own character. So as I showed, um, the colour I chose for the doors is by Liberon. It's called Gris Temps de Pluie, which means rainy day grey, which I think is a, a really lovely colour. And again, Liberon paints are just gorgeous. They really go on very easily and they, they have good coverage. So um, once I'd sanded the door a little bit, I went in with this uh, pointy brush just to get into all the angles because there are so many panels on these doors. I really had to make sure that there were no drips or or little pools forming in the corners so um, these doors were a bit challenging. I also extended the grey colour to the window frame, so I'm going to leave it like this for a while and just live with it and see how I feel about it, but I think it looks nice that way. The electrician also finished up, which was fantastic, and I think he did a really great job. Initially I was worried about some of the cables being visible in some of the rooms, but he really did it in such a subtle way that they almost become part of the skirting boards, so I'm really happy with his work. This wardrobe I was going to paint initially for my son, I was going to paint it blue for his room, but um, since painting the walls white, I think it looks really lovely against the white, so I might leave it like that for a little while and just live with it and see if it starts to grow on me. While downstairs remains such a building site, it's lovely to, to come upstairs and, and start to see the rooms taking shape and feeling a little bit more like home. Um, the, the, door, the door handles I didn't paint because I want to take them off and see if I can strip them back to the metal. I think they might be steel or something like that. So I, I can just see them in my mind if they're lovely and shiny and sort of chromey. They might look lovely like that. Um, other than that, I can just repaint them if, if it's not nice. But I'm going to give that a try. As I mentioned, the bathroom door is going to be painted a different colour on either side. So I picked up a really nice tip that I read online because I was wondering about how to do that. And it explained how whatever side of the door you're on, um, you look at how much of the door you can actually see and you choose your colour according to that. So here we can only see the face of the door. So the face of this side of the door, I'm going to paint dark grey like the other doors. 
But then when you are on the other side of the door, you see a lot more of it as it's coming towards you. So as you're opening the door, and I imagine you're in the bathroom, you're opening the door, you can see the face of the door, but you can also see the side of the door. So for this side of the door, then I'll paint the side of the door and the face of the door in one color. So I thought that was a really good tip and I wanted to share that with you. Something else I wanted to mention as a little piece of friendly advice is that if you're ever buying painter's tape, don't buy the cheap painter's tape like I did. It is such a headache. It keeps ripping, it keeps just getting stuck in, in corners. It's terrible. It just makes extra work. So I really regret that. I think it's well worth buying the, the more expensive one, the blue one. I think it's by Scotch. I'm not too sure. But um, the, the white cheap painter's tape is an absolute nightmare. So I wanted to share also a little bit about our progress in the bathroom. Um, as you can see, I painted all the walls and the ceiling uh, the same color as the other rooms, white. And uh, it really, it's such a small room, so white really helped to make it look a lot bigger. And what we did was we marked out where the shower was going to be and the toilet, and we varnished with a special bathroom varnish underneath those areas, just in case of any leaks or anything like that, as a little precaution. And the next thing then that we did was to put the, the shower base down and make sure that it was level. So it has all these adjustable legs underneath it. And uh, because our floorboards are all a little bit wonky, it's an old house, um, we were able to readjust it so that it would be completely level and sturdy. To be honest, I didn't film a lot of the plumbing because um, I wanted to be helpful, I wanted to be useful to Nicolas and uh, because it, it wasn't like he knew exactly what he was doing, we were both learning. He knew a lot more about it than I did, but um, still there were things that we had both had to learn as we were going, so I really wanted us to concentrate on it. Um, but I did take some photos and a little bit of footage as we went. We also got started on making the board and batten sort of structure that we had in mind to hide the drainage pipes. So um, it was good to see that taking shape as well. I think that'll look really lovely once it's all painted and I do the, um, the framing structure on the front of it. But uh, we did it at a, a width of five centimeters. That was the minimum that we could do because it is a very small room. I didn't want it to take up too much space. So that really was the smallest that we could make it uh, with just enough room for the drainage pipe to fit in behind.
it was wonderful to see it all plumbed in and um, to know that it would work and just it was a, a big relief for me because I wasn't sure that this piece of furniture was if it was going to be too big or too imposing in the room and to see the water coming on was just great it was a big um big success for us especially for Nicola he did most of the work but we did check for uh drips and leaks in the pipes especially underneath the shower where it was difficult to see so we used this little camera to uh to take a look underneath where the pipes were and see if there were any drips at all and it was it was all right first time there were no no problems so uh, i was really proud of him he did a really great job i didn't film us installing the shower much at all um but to be honest a lot of it was just us trying to understand the instructions <laughs> so it probably would have been quite boring to watch but um it was great to see it up and working and we did pick a larger shower but we did that deliberately because it's such a small room we wanted to at least be able to take a shower without hitting our elbows off the sides so um i was actually really relieved it maybe doesn't show so much in the video but when you're in the room it doesn't feel like it's too big it feels perfectly fine there's enough room around the toilet there's enough room in front of the sink there's enough room in front of the shower there's room for hooks and all sorts of things but one thing i did do was to put this mirror in I don't rem I don't know if you remember me mentioning um, that I'm going to do a makeover of this mirror. Well, this is where the mirror is going to go once I've done the makeover. Um, I just wanted to put it in here and just double check that it would be okay. And it really just elevates the room. It makes it seem so much taller and uh, so much more bright as well. So I will share that with you when I've got it properly uh, centered and painted and um, because it is a little bit too wide at the base I do need to trim off some of the wood to get it to to fit properly on the on the actual vanity so I'll share that with you when I have that done. I do like the idea also of installing maybe a couple of battery powered sconces to either side of the mirror. I think there's enough space between the wall and the mirror to put one uh, here on the on the right hand side and then another one on the left hand side, but I'll see about that at a later stage. We have so much coming up, so the next thing we're probably going to be doing is installing the new kitchen floor, so I can't wait to share that with you. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.